Hey guys, it's me Minori and my pet Baymax. Welcome back to my channel. Hi. Okay, so I have a dream. I've always had this dream ever since I was like a teeny tiny girl, but I've always wanted to start like a small business. I've always wanted to like sell my craft works and artworks online. However, it really never happened because it's really not that easy. Or so I thought. Recently, I've been watching a lot of TikTok videos and I noticed that a lot of people have been starting a small business online. I know, I'm inspired by TikTok. I'm just so into watching all of those like crafting videos and I just couldn't help but try it myself. So today I'm going to try out all these TikTok inspired crafting ideas and if I like how they turn out, I'm going to sell them on Etsy. But um, I've never done any of these techniques before so hopefully they turn out okay. So anyways, without further ado, let's just jump right in. I'm going to start a small business. Let's get started. Oh, by the way, it took me a few days to shoot this video, so don't mind my clothes changing here and there. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so excited. So first off, I'm going to try out making some phone cases. So today I'm going to be customizing these phone cases. I don't know if you guys seen this before, but it's like so popular on TikTok. So apparently you use something called a sublimation process. And I was like, what in the world is the sublimation process? But it's just like so interesting. So for this project, you will need a sublimation printer, a heat press, and a sublimation blank phone case. So this is a normal printer, but I'm going to turn it into a sublimation printer. And it's brand new. Let me just peel all the tape off. There's one more. So satisfying. So apparently after doing a lot of research, you can turn a normal printer into a sublimation printer. However, you can't turn it back into a normal printer. So I actually got a completely new printer just for this project. This printer comes with a specific type of ink, but you cannot use that ink or it's going to turn into a normal printer. You're going to need something called a sublimation ink. See right here, it says type sublimation ink. You can find these on Amazon. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. I kind of want to start with yellow because I feel like that's the easiest color to kind of clean it up. So we're going to use a syringe to put the ink inside the machine. So I'm just going to put it in, kind of tilt it and pull. So you're going to need to repeat this process for all the colors. You basically use a syringe to slowly pour it into each tank. It's not that hard, but it took me like an hour to fill up half the tank. This syringe can only suck up like a few millimeters and it just takes a while. I also took my time since you cannot mess this part up. Once you put the wrong color into the wrong tank, it just messes everything up. And I think we're done. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. And I also got a lot of ink splatters all over the table, so I guess it's something to keep in mind. Don't wear your favorite clothes when you're doing this project. And next up, I'm going to put in some sublimation papers. It only works on one side. So, I'm just going to set it in like so. And that's it guys. Hopefully it works. Okay, next up, I'm going to need a design for my phone case. And because this is like a sample, it's my first time doing it. So I'm just going to quickly make a design using my old drawings. Oh, by the way, I ended up changing the background because I wanted to keep it simple. So um, let's just go with this design. I don't want to take too much time thinking. And save. And now step three, print out the design using the sublimation printer. Um, it actually didn't work that great for my first few tries. The color was like so sheer with like random lines inside. So I took like a few hours to figure out how to print it out properly. I cleaned the nozzle like five times. I tested some ink out and it finally started to work after I changed the paper settings. So yeah, it may take a while at first to get everything right. Okay, moving on. Now I'm going to heat press this design onto the sheet. So, 
and I'm going to use some tape to tape it up. You obviously cannot use normal tape or it's going to melt. You're going to need a heat resistant tape, which I also got on Amazon. By the way, everyone asks me where I get my stuff and I basically get like 99% of my stuff on Amazon. Apparently you can use like a normal iron if you want to, but today I'm going to be using this Cricut heat press. As you can see, it's not opened yet, so I've never used it before. Some people use those like really big heat press machines, but I thought this Cricut one was so cute. It's quite heavy. So while I'm waiting for this to heat up, it's going to take a while. I'm going to open my easy press mat, again from Cricut. Lastly, I'm going to get some cooking sheets and place it on top. Apparently you're supposed to do it for 115 seconds. Okay, I'm so excited but kind of scared at the same time. Hopefully it works. So now I'm going to press this right on top and start. Since there's so much space, I guess you can do like two to three at once. But for now, I'm just starting with one project. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. What happens if it doesn't work out and I got all of this for nothing? Oh my gosh. Three, two, one. And we're done. So I'm gonna put it aside and I'm just going to wait for it for it to cool down. I know as much as I want to like check it right now, I need to stay calm, let it cool down, or else I could kind of burn myself. Ten seconds later. And let's see guys. And the reveal. Ooh, okay. <gasps> wait, wait, it looks a little bit cloudy, but I feel like you can like rub this off. Let me bring it to the water and try rinsing it off. So guys, this is my first try ever and um, it did work, technically kind of worked, but as you can see, there's like a weird residue on top. And I tried washing it off, but it didn't come off. So I think I need to do a little bit more research and try it again. Okay, so guys, after a lot of researching, I figured out the problem. And the problem was, so there's actually a protective seal on top of the sheet and you're supposed to peel it off first. Here, I print it out again, and let's try it again. And here we go again. Hopefully it works. Guys, I would be devastated if this doesn't work. 30 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And again, we're going to wait for a few minutes for it to cool down. And let's see how it turned out. The reveal. <gasps> oh my gosh. Guys, look at how it turned out. This is like perfect. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm impressed. What do you guys think? Now I'm just going to peel off this sheet and stick it on. And there we have it. Our completely original phone case. I'm so in love. The color is so vibrant as well. And I'm just like super impressed. Okay, so now that I know that it works, I wanna make a few more designs and kind of play around with it. So here we go. I decided to make a few designs. I first made a case with my puppy lobby. And then I made this random case of a chocolate bar. But then I was like, nah. I didn't feel like making that one. I also made one for my friend. And lastly, I made a design of my channel mascot. You know that girl that comes in the beginning of my videos? Yeah, her. I used to use that mascot because I originally didn't want to reveal my face. And I thought I would use that girl instead. However, I ended up revealing my face, but I've been using her as my channel mascot for all these years. So she's really special to me. And then I used the heat press for all the designs. By the way, a few things to keep in mind. One, you need to mirror the image. Two, the color is going to turn out a tad a bit different from how you want, so you kind of need to adjust and try it out a few times. And three, don't forget to take off that protective seal on top. So I made four new cases. Let's see how it turned out. 
I forgot to take off the protective seal for this one. No. Like, it's okay. There's always a learning curve and you will always mess up like a hundred times when you start something new. So yeah, um, I am sad. It did go to a waste, but yeah, it happens. Next up. Okay, yes. This one I think turned out to be a success. The next one is, um, okay. Yeah, it turned out really nice, but it's actually for a friend. It's not mine. So I know the design is kind of random, but still, I think it turned out really nice. It's really saturated. The color is so pretty. And one more, the reveal. <gasps> okay, yes. Same design, different color. I just want to see how it's going to turn out. And for this one, I'm going to put it on a black case. So far, so good. And let me quickly remake my lobby one one last time. reveal. I have to say it's a little bit off-centered but still I really really like how it turned out. So after like a whole day of crafting this is what I made and I'm just in love with all of them. Okay moving on. Okay now that we have a sublimation printer we can now decorate almost anything. Well maybe not like everything but you can now use the sublimation process on like fabric, like t-shirt, masks, tote bag, you know, any kind of fabric. You can decorate towels, you can decorate floor mats. You know, there's a lot of things you can make. So next up, I'm going to try sublimating a mask. Again, I printed out using this printer and now I'm just going to line it up, place, make sure I get all the edges, tape it up and start. Three, two, one and release let it cool down for a bit and <gasps> the reveal Ta-da! and oh my gosh it worked so so well however as you can see i accidentally printed onto my mat <laughs> but like look look at how pretty it turned out and yes, it's washable. So, oh my gosh, I'm so, so excited. Okay, I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And this time, I'm going to use a cooking sheet on both sides. Three, two, one. And release. And the reveal. <gasps> oh my gosh. It turned out so much better than I thought. I'm loving it so much. What do you guys think? Seriously, the quality is amazing. It's definitely Minori approved. Okay, next up with the sublimation printer, you can also decorate a mug. You're basically going to use the same process. You're going to print out a design, tape it onto the mug and heat it up. And to heat it up, since it's kind of curved, it's really hard to use a heat press. So some people actually put it in the oven to heat it up. But today we're going to be using a mug press. Again, I've never used it before, so I honestly don't know what I'm doing. But let's see how it works. Ta-da! Ooh! <gasps> look! The cord looks like Mickey Mouse. I'm going to look up YouTube for a bit to see how it works. BRB. Ten seconds later. And I'm back. And I just went ahead and printed out this design using my sublimation printer. Um, she's my original character. And I painted her a few weeks ago. And you guys are going to see her again in a few weeks. But yeah, I'm going to try to sublimate this design onto the mug. I'm going to cut it and tape it onto the mug. <gasps> I forgot! You're supposed to mirror the image. Let me go quickly reprint this. And tape it up. I'm also going to tape up some cooking sheet on top. So everything's set up and it's getting very, very warm. And I think it's ready. So now I'm just going to slip it in. And press down. And now let's wait for a few minutes. And when it's ready, all you have to do is release and carefully take it out. And it tells you to wait for about like 20 minutes until it completely cools down. Do not touch while it's still hot. Okay, and let's see how it turned out. Uh, 
Okay, I think I did it a little bit wrong. I think I messed up with the heat settings. This is how it turned out. It still kind of worked, but it's not there. But you know what? It's actually still really, really cute. You know what? I think I like it even more than how it should have turned out. Because honestly, this fade is giving me the vibes. I don't know. Okay, I failed, but still it turned out great. I would do it again, but I don't have that many mugs. So I think I'm going to try it a different day. But yeah, what do you guys think? And what's great about this is that it's 100% dishwasher safe. Like it's on there for good. I mean, I messed it up, but the quality is there. It's 100% Minoria proof. Okay, now that I had so much fun with the sublimation technique, let's move on. Okay, next up, I wanna make some pop sockets. I don't know, I think it'll be really cute if I can make like matching pop sockets. Let's see how it turns out. So I went on Amazon and got a lot of pop sockets. And to be honest, um, these turned out to be a little bit different from what I imagined. So this was what I thought I was getting. You know, like a normal pop socket. And this was what I got. As you can see, it works as a normal pop socket, but the shape is a little bit different and it doesn't have a top. I was originally thinking of like putting a sticker on top of this or something, but since it doesn't have a cover, I had to come up with a different plan. I walked around my local art store and found printable shrink dinks. If you don't know what a shrink dink is, I've used it so many times in my videos before and you guys can go check that out. But it's basically like a piece of plastic paper and when you put it in the oven, it shrinks and turns into hard plastic. So I'm thinking of printing out like a charm that's like big enough to cover this up. So I went ahead and printed out my design onto the sheet. Again, I'm using my channel mascot. I decided to use my Cricut cutter to cut it, which I have to say worked, but it left like this white residue on top of the mat. So I guess I need to try it out a few more times so it won't totally destroy my mat. After I was done cutting, I went to the oven to shrink it into plastic. And I just love looking at this process. It's so mesmerizing. And this is how it turned out. I'm going to stick this onto the pop socket using double-sided tape. And there we have it, our very own pop socket. Works perfectly fine and so cute. <gasps> I love it. I'm just going to put it onto the case. And here I have my very own original phone case with a pop socket. <gasps> what do you guys think? I think it turned out so, so cute. And you cannot tell that I made it at home. Like it doesn't look like a craft. It looks like a legit phone case. And guys, I'm so proud of myself. I then made a few more new designs using my iPad. Guys, I think I had a little bit too much fun. I think they turned out so, so professional and I'm just so proud of myself. It's completely Minoria approved. So you know what guys? 
I'm going to sell them online, but I'm obviously not going to sell every single item here. Today, I'm going to be selling these two cases with a pop socket online. I'm going to be selling them in two different colors and three different sizes. I hope you guys understand because this is my first time selling items online and I kind of want to start small. I couldn't buy every single cases out there, so I decided to pick up three most popular sizes. I'm going to be putting them into small bags like this. <gasps> it fits, it fits, but I can't zip it up. Um, <laughs> I guess I got the wrong size, but you know, it still fits. Oh my gosh, they look so professional. And I'm also going to throw in a bag of candies that I made a bit ago. Okay, disclaimer, they're 100% edible. You guys can go check out my video. I made it professionally with professionals. They're 100% edible, but I would not recommend them for you to eat. I just hope you guys would use it as like a decoration. I don't know, I think it'll be really cute to put it up on the shelf, decorate the room, or like maybe put it into resin and make some cute charms. So in this pack, you're going to get a bag of candies, a pop socket, and an iPhone case with the color of your choice and size. And this pack is going to be $35. But the thing is, I want to start really, really small, so I'm only going to sell 30 packs. A very, very limited edition. I will have the link in my description box below, so guys, please, please check it out. So this is going to be like super, super rare. So this is how it turned out. I'm so, so in love. I mean, they look so professional. I mean, look at this mask. I honestly don't think anyone's going to believe me even if I say I made this at home. I just love, love it. Oh, and please let me add, since this is my first time, it may take a while to ship, and some products may not be like perfect. Everything is completely 100% handmade by me. So if you're looking for like the perfect product, this might not be it. But if you guys want to support a brand new small business, please do check out the link in the description box below. Okay, so that's it guys. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next video. Bye!